Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and hey, you can do this. Yes. Because, because this is Air Windows MV2. So, so I'll bring you up to speed on what this thing is. MV, and you're actually, you're not hearing the microphone I'm recording on, instead you're hearing through the microphone that is part of the laptop that I've got the software running on. So the entire audio going into MV2 is literally Apple um, M1 modern MacBook Pro um, onboard mic. And it can do this. MV which can be kind of distractingly weird. But I'll tell you what, we're going to put on regeneration. And then this is just going to hang out being a background noise so that uh, I'll just kind of deal with it. MV is based on the uh, old MIDI verb. Not the original one, but MIDI Verb 2, which had a famous Bloom algorithm. And that's kind of what's going on there, in that you're hearing the buildup of this Bloom algorithm. So what that does is, if it's cut down to almost nothing, you're hearing a sort of faint... Oh, God. Okay, okay that, that, that was, was really weird. weird. Sorry about that. that. You're hearing a kind of echoey behavior, but this is not a normal... Let's see what it does if I do that again. Interesting. So yeah, it's like a reverb, but it's not normal because all it is is a giant stack of all pass filters. Repeat, a giant stack of all pass filters. So what that does when you have this run of nothing but all pass filters is you have this weird sort of blur effect. It acts and sounds kind of like a reverb. This is a sort of old school dual mono reverb. For instance, I will make the reverb bounce around from side to side now. Go to the hard left, go to the hard right. And of course, if we're making it feed back, then you can do stereotype stuff. But the deal with these all-pass filters is that they're nothing but 100% blur. MV2 is a follow-up to the first one, which is MV. And what that one is, is exactly the same, but it doesn't adapt to high sample rates. So you would lose all of your, we'll put it this way. MV2, if we run it at uh, 192K, for instance, it would sound exactly like this, which is a very short echo. But then, then you could do this. So it's kind of like a Paul stretch thing. And we can make it brighter. One of the side effects to having all of this weirdness is that uh, this can be a really artificial sounding verb, which is cool enough when you're doing weird things with it and all. You know, I mean, what's not to like about that? 
but that's why you might want to turn the bright down. Or say we'll put it halfway. And then we'll put the depth a lot deeper so that it's somewhat less distracting. But at no matter what sample rate you're running at, you could have it be the ultimate size here. Or Regen 100% is the ultimate size. I think if I remember correctly, this is not the same as the original MV. And I'll tell you why. It's because the way that the feedback works was always kind of difficult to make work. I'm going to take regen off of the full crank now. Put it back to almost. But yeah, I remember the uh, the regen being really difficult on the original MV, so I think I tweaked it. I don't remember exactly. We can brighten it up a little bit. Or we can make it be shorter so that it's acting more like a hall or something. And it's going to be doing the same thing of side-to-side -side behavior. Can do that kind of stuff. And there is that sort of unnatural quality to it, but I mean, if you want to get for something retro, or I, I don't know, I'm not your boss. If you like what this does, then rock on. And you can do anything you want with it. So there you have it. Now I don't know if you're going to like MV2, but if you are coming along with me on the whole let's use higher sample rates thing, then it might be right up your alley for taking an effect like this and doing something with it. I know that this effect has been used on sort of famous guitar parts and, th and things because the original device that popularized it is actually MIDI Verb 2. I have one of those in my rack, although if I was going to do that, I'd probably want to use this for it. Because it lets me do that. That's about the size of it. So, let me set this up to be a some kind of big room, but nothing too obnoxious. The dangerous thing about that is that if you set it up just right, you cannot speak anymore because the effect of it is a speech disruptor. Actually, let me do that just for fun. So if I set it up like this, I can make it be in that zone where it's screwing your head up as much as possible. And that's the kind of thing that can make people speak or uh, talk in a disrupted way from feeding in the delayed sound to their earphones. So actually, let's not do that. Now, whether or not you're interested in MV2, I would say this. I am looking to build up my studio a little bit and I'm going to go to work on that because one of the things that we're doing is I am thinking by July I'm going to have the uh, Bricasti in. It is paid for. Thank you to everybody who helped get me to the goal where I was comfortable doing that. Now it's just going forward through that. So there's going to be a lot of more sophisticated reverbs coming out. But I also have some other things I'm working on. For instance, I've been doing a lot of work on Mondays 
on something that I'm calling, uh, well, I first called it Fatty Q, and now I've got some new designs around it, and I'm going to be trying to model the, this is far too distracting, I'm going to be trying to model the uh, sound of famous console EQs, such as are in classic records. And in one of my Monday live streams, I think the most recent one, I was actually playing a lot of music um, in my actual studio off of classic records that I knew had uh, had uh, React people using them. And it was a somewhat distracting experience because on the one hand, I didn't have it patched through to the uh, the direct input, so you could only hear my speakers, and uh, my subwoofers were unusually rumbly and thunderous. I have some work to do on those as well. But the other thing that happened was I got a million copyright claims, not strikes, claims. It seems as if I still got it right enough that um, Nobody was attacking my channel, but boy, everything showed up. It's like, we heard, we saw what you did there. We saw what you did there. We saw what you did there too. And so I'm somewhat hesitant to jump back into doing um, more playing of music. Firstly, because I'm not patching it straight through. So it's like I'm getting dinged for the copyright thing, but I'm not actually showing you what it sounds like. But I'm also kind of tempted, so I'm really not sure what I'm going to do around that. But the purpose of me capturing all of that stuff that uh, some of you heard on Monday was to get reference for what these console EQs sound like. And that is something I'm really interested in exploring. There's a lot of stuff that I would like to do through the purpose of giving people the ability to do the basic equivalent of working on these classical consoles in the sense of get it to sound right, get the mixes to sit right, because we're talking versions of Air Windows console, and then be able to do the mixing moves, the EQ moves that would be consistent with pe what people had available back then. And on the basis of that, appropriate uh, mixes and things ought to sort of fall into place if I am able to do that correctly. I have a good feeling about this. I have a new uh, EQ algorithm, which is somewhat based on what I was doing with Console Zero and somewhat based on a variation of Holt, which isn't really quite Holt anymore. But I have it so that you can do, you know, like 10 poles of its... I've got a bunch of interesting stuff in the works. I'm looking forward to bringing some of this together, and I'm not sure how quickly it's all going to come to fruition. I'm not going to have all of it out uh, in June, but July and August ought to look really exciting, in part because of the Procasti thing, in part because of this work on new versions of console. And yeah, I have been having a interesting time of it. Uh, I have apparently discovered that I have been shouted out on the BBC recently. And uh, thank you to the person who did that. I really appreciate it. I am glad to run across somebody who understands what I'm trying to do with this stuff. Yes, indeed. I am trying to put tools into people's hands that they can have, whether or not they have money. Because I don't think whether or not they have money correlates to whether you have anything musically to say. And on that note, um, I better get back to work. I'll show you more about all of this stuff later. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.